difficult is that now, as the decades have slid by, when people learn that the United States was bombed by thousands of balloon bombs during the course of the war, they're in disbelief. And people are always astonished when they learn the details. The Japanese balloon bomb program comes directly out of the Doolittle Raid, directly. In April 1942, Jimmy Doolittle and his raiders fly over Japan and drop bombs on Tokyo, Yokohama, Kobe, other cities. The bombs did relatively little damage, but what the raiders did do was weaken the morale of the Japanese people. The idea that Japan could be invaded, attacked from outside was inconceivable to the Japanese. The Japanese high command was embarrassed to say the least. They wanted to retaliate in kind. Doolittle and his raiders had bombed the sacred homeland. We need to retaliate and bomb the United States. The Japanese didn't have any long range bombers. They tried a couple other exercises, projects, didn't pan out. The Japanese Navy was so engrossed in war in the Pacific that they simply lacked the submarines or the airplanes to attack the United States directly. They enlisted all their scientific technical institutes. The Japanese were the first people to discover what's known today as the jet stream. It runs from about 28,000 to 40,000 feet high. It's a river of high moving air, about 120 miles per hour. So it goes through the upper stratosphere and it goes over Japan, the Pacific Ocean, and the US. If we can get a balloon up there, nobody's gonna be able to see it. It can cross the ocean and it can drop the bombs. Fugo is the name the Japanese assigned to this weapon, colloquially known as balloon bombs, coming from the literal translation in the Japanese, Fusen Bakudan. These are large hydrogen-filled balloons, about 33 feet in diameter, armed with four incendiary bombs and one conventional high-explosive bomb. And the idea, from the Japanese perspective, is that these bombs, when dropped on the Western states, would ignite wildfires that the Americans would have to fight by diverting resources that otherwise would be used in the Pacific theater. The Japanese also intended these bombs to be weapons of terror, introducing panic amongst the American people. The idea that bombs would rain down silently from above with no idea of where they were coming from would weaken the morale of the American people. From November 1944 to April 1945, the Japanese launched about 9,000 of these balloons. The actual concentration of where the balloons landed was the Pacific Northwest, but they were as far east as Michigan, as far south as Mexico, and as far north as the Yukon and Alaska. So the Japanese launched 9,000 of these balloons during the war. The War Department at the time estimated that 10% would survive the transoceanic crossing and arrive in North America. So that's about 900. There are only about 350 confirmed sightings and recoveries in North America. So what that means is that there are dozens or perhaps hundreds of balloons that arrived on this continent but were never accounted for. It's almost certain that there is unexploded ordnance out there laying on the ground for more than 75 years. In October 2014, I was living near Covington, Louisiana, and I'm sitting there with the dog at my feet, trying to eat breakfast, and everything came to a grinding halt as I stared at my phone and read the reality of what had happened that reported two forestry workers in British Columbia discovered an intact Fugo balloon bomb. 